lovely people. How are you all today? Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here, and I am happy to be back with you. Sorry I went missing in action. Um, and thank you to all of you who um, reached out and said, hey, where are you? We miss you. All is fine. I had a, a bit of a crazy end to the weekend, or to the end of the week last week. My in-laws actually left on Wednesday evening. They stayed at a hotel down in Honolulu, down at the airport before flying out Thursday morning. Um, Thursday, I had every intention of doing a video. My, my regular floss tube, since I didn't get one done Tuesday while they were here. But my head kind of exploded. I didn't do, I worked on the, the website. Well, I worked on some, excuse me. I worked on some designs some while they were here. You know, we didn't do a whole lot of running around. They're in their mid 80s, so it's not like they wanted to do a lot of activities. They were just here mainly to visit. And then when Mike came home from work, you know, he would come home from work early and we would go out for dinner and, you know, sunset pictures, that kind of thing. So it's not like it was a very active week, but there were a lot of things piling up in my mind that I didn't get done while they were here. So Thursday, um, I wanted to get a video done. There's all kinds of things on the on the website that I can't do, that I need Mike's help for. So that was piling up in my mind. Um, I decided in the midst of all of this that I was going to change how I keep my floss, how I store my main floss inventory. And I had started that before they got here, so that was kind of on hold. And in a mess. So all of that was just kind of piling up so that by Thursday morning I was just on overload and I couldn't do anything. I, I went into a, a full-blown panic attack and that does not happen very often. I am not a person who, um, I mean I'm, I'm pretty much on an even keel for the most part. I don't, I don't react that way to things unless it's technology and then it's there's no even keel when technology goes bad. <laughs> Grr. There was some of that over the weekend. But, um, yes, it was just too much at once. And I, I just kind of, I said, I can talk myself out of panic modes. I know that um, I have no reason to panic. I have no deadlines. Any deadlines I set, I've set on myself. There's nobody out there that says you have to get this done by a certain time. So it took me a while, but by the time I was calmed down, I didn't feel like talking to anybody. I barely felt like talking to Mike. Um, Friday, I had a hair appointment. Look, green hair. It was supposed to be more blue. It's called sea glass, but it was supposed to be more of a turquoisey, of course, rather than green, but that's okay. She had to do kind of a, um, she called it a cuticle opener. I think it was more of a bleach <laughs> type of thing. It certainly smelled like it um, to open the cuticles to allow it to take the color. I guess because once you go gray, you don't have any pigment in your hair anymore. Um, and so there's nothing for the color to cling to. But anyways, it worked. It's a semi-permanent, so it'll wash out after a while. Um, but anyways, Friday morning, hair appointment. I was running around the rest of the day. I didn't get home until like 2.30. Hadn't had lunch yet. Um, so I decided to not even bother to try a do, to do a stitch with me on Friday either. You know, I just basically had to step back from something and the videos were what I decided to step back from. Saturday, Sunday, we spent a lot of time working on the website. Got a lot of the things taken care of that I needed Mike's help with. Sunday, I met with the stitchy girls here. It's been a while. It's actually been since before StitchCon that we got together. So it was so good to see them and just sit and chat and catch up. Love these ladies here. They are just, they're everything. They're just everything. Um, yeah, so here we are, Tuesday, back at our normal schedule. It is Tuesday, 
September, right? We're still in September. September 17th, 8.38 a.m. It is 80 degrees and sunny here in Mililani, Hawaii. So, things are back to normal. The website is going good. I hope tonight Mike has to get the security certificate put on it for the um, PayPal transactions. So I hope that we can test it tonight and definitely by the end of the week it will be open. Maybe before then. Um, I'm not sure. You know, I'll be announcing it on Instagram. I'll be announcing it on um, my Jan Hicks Creates Facebook page. So if you are not following that, please do. Um, and I will probably do a video when I open to announce the opening and kind of step you through everything that's there. It's not like it's anything difficult or anything, you know, complicated, but just to kind of show you how I decided to do things. So that is smoothing, moving along quite well. Um, like I said, the visit with my in-laws was fantastic. I am just so thrilled that they were able to make it out here. As you know, um, if you've been following me for a while, there were some health issues. Um, they had hoped to come earlier, but the health issues prevented them. So all is good now. They were able to get out here. They loved it. Um, you know, they're in Phoenix. So being out here in the humidity and the um, cooler temps compared to Phoenix, my mother-in-law was just thrilled. She hated to leave. And of course, in the mornings and in the evenings, we can open things up here and have the breeze coming into the living room. It's just so pleasant. Um, she even made a comment that the humidity felt so good on her skin. <laughs> See, humidity, it's not a bad thing. All right, so news, stitchy news. I was struck now this is this is notes from a couple weeks ago so they're a little bit delayed of course you know it's been two weeks since it's been two weeks since my last video um it seems like a long time but it's only two weeks but anyways i have all these notes from over the two weeks so let me go let me get started something like that it struck me the other day that there is a convergence happening in the stitching world right now that I find fascinating. You know how much I love Kelly Stadola's Bitsy Bobs. That's So Kelly Co. is her Etsy shop. I think as soon as she created these, I was out there buying them and using them. She's taken it to another level. Now, for those that follow her, you know that, um, or who are also avid Bitsy Bob people, you know that her and Joan have kind of, they haven't split, they're all still going to be doing some videos together, but they're each kind of doing their own videos as well to focus on their own, basically their own businesses, their own, their own, own shops and their own creativity. And Kelly is amazing. Kelly has a graphic arts background. She does freelance graphic art design. And so she is taking that skill and, you know, not only did she start to like create some bitsy bobs that had like shapes on them, like beehives and snowmen, that kind of thing. She's also taking it into the cross stitch design world. And one thing she did in, on her most recent update was she created a cross stitch design, she stitched it, she scanned it in, and then she has a printer that will print on fabric. And so she printed that out and incorporated that design into a Bitsy Bob. And it's this pumpkin harvest one. It is so cool. I'm sure those have sold out by now. Like I said, the, these notes are from two weeks ago. I will be, I'll, everybody I mentioned, I'll be linking below, by the way, so you can find her, find them all. Um, I, I love what Kelly is doing, and I highly recommend you check her out if you haven't so far. Like I said, so, so you'll have a cross-stitch pattern and a Bitsy Bob that coordinate. How's that for matchy-matchy? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Kelly, you are so talented. Um, Michelle. 
Bendy Stitching, Michelle Garrett. She is starting to design. She has her own website, and again, it'll be linked below, Bendy Stitchy. Now, she is um, so far designing smalls, um, kind of along her, what she loves, Alice in Wonderland, some Halloween-type things, um, Misty Purcell. Of course, Misty has been doing this. She just came up on her year anniversary. So, the convergence I'm talking about, and then me. I had no intention even a month ago of doing this but it's just it's just exploded in my head and I know it's gonna work so the convergence is like there's all these and we just happen to be floss tubers and you know for whatever that's worth I don't know but my former mentor V I've mentioned her before she's the friend who lived up in Connecticut in Stonington Connecticut and passed away unexpectedly a few years ago In the scrapbooking world, in the digital scrapbooking world, you would often have, even within the same store, Scrap Girls was the first store I worked at, you would have several different designers coming up with the same idea just about the same time. And there, was, there would always be a slightly different take on that idea, but it was all kind of the same genre, same type of thing, digital scrapbooking world. And it probably came from some trend out there that was big that the different minds kind of worked with and incorporated and molded, bringing it into the digital scrapbooking world. And V would say, you know, there, there's some kind of movement that happens in the creative world, in the creative universe, that different people get inspired by the same thing at the same time. It doesn't mean you're copying. It doesn't mean that you're taking ideas from somebody else. You're often inspired by other people, but it just seems to happen that in, when you have creatives all working in the same circle, there's a, a convergence that's happening. And it's so interesting to see it happen again. It happened time and time, over and over in the digital scrapbooking world. And I find it very interesting to see it happening in the floss tube world. I think there's somebody else, oh, Kindred Stitcher. She is doing reproduction samplers. Um, I know she's working on one. I haven't watched a video of hers in a while, so I don't know what the status is on that. And it seems to me there was somebody else out there that somebody mentioned somewhere that I'm forgetting. Um, so yeah, I am going to link everybody below. I just find it fascinating and I am thrilled to be a part of it. It's just, it's who I am. So, that news. The next news that I'm equally thrilled about, Pattern Keeper, the app Pattern Keeper. This is an app for full coverage charts. It is a developed, it is an Android only, only app. It is developed by a woman named Asa Falcon Craft. Falkenberg. I'm sorry, Asa. I didn't write it down. Um, she's Swedish. She's a software designer, and she has created. And she is a stitcher, and she has created an app that is amazing. Now, like I said, it's only for full coverage at this point, but it does so much. Karen, a needle bug, did it, uh, several videos on the usage of it. Um, it blew me away so much, and you know I am a dedicated knit companion user, but it blew me away so much that I ordered a Kindle Fire and it's coming tomorrow <laughs> just so I can use this app. Yeah. Now, not all full coverage stores patterns. It is a PDF reader, but not all stores patterns work on the app yet. Asa is slowly um, manipulating, doing whatever software engineering stuff she has to do to um, get it to work. We sent her, Karen actually sent her one of my patterns and she looked at it and she said she doesn't think it's gonna be that hard of a fix, so she's going to get my patterns to work on her app. So that will be um, available. 
It depends on, I think, what software is used to create a pattern. Each software does something different, so she has to adapt her her app to work with the, that pa that software's patterns. So, if you're an Android user and you do full coverage patterns and you haven't heard of it yet, go watch Karen's videos, again, linked below, and get that app. It is a $9 subscription I think that you have to buy it for nine dollars but i think that's the only fee there is i'm not sure i haven't done it yet but I, I think that's what i remember karen saying um so yeah now having said that i have had some conversations with sally of nick companion over the past few weeks she is working on some fixes based on all the support tickets that people have been putting in there are a couple of fixes that will happen in her next update but there are also a couple of fixes that won't happen that are can only happen with the next iOS, um, which actually should be coming up here pretty soon. September, October is when they usually have the next iOS update. They just announced the iPhones, the new iPhone, so I'm sure there's an iOS update coming. So she does have some fixes for some of the bugs that have been bothering us in Knit Companion. So stay tuned for that. Um, StitchCon. It's on. So the invoices have gone out to all those who were there last year. For those that came back and said they couldn't make it, they started going to the waiting list. So they are starting to work through the waiting list as things get paid. You know, it fills up. As people say, no, I can't go, openings happen. I think the, the general way it happens is you'll, you have this flush of activity at the beginning, give and take, people coming, going, that kind of thing. And then there will be a lull until the point in time when um, I think after which date you won't get a refund if you cancel. And I don't know what that date is off the top of my head. I want to say like April 1st or something like that. When it gets to that point, approaching April 1st, people will start to realize that, oh, they can't go after all, things have come up. And so more people will cancel and the waiting list will start activating again. So if you have heard that there's activity, but you haven't and you're on the waiting list and you haven't heard anything yet, don't fret, you may, may very well. Several of the ladies here are on the waiting list and oh my God, it would be so awesome if you guys could go. We'd have so much fun. Carolyn, oh, Carolyn, I hope you can go. <laughs> Anyway, the ladies that, that um, were at my table last year are all going back and I can't wait to see them. So much fun. All right, so I think that is all of my news. All the news that's fit to print or to speak. So what have I been working on the past week? The past two weeks. Needless to stay, say, with working on the um, well, let me say this first. Okay, I'm going to now go through my whips. Of course, there's no finishes. Um, go through my haul, and then I'm gonna talk about my absolutely crazy and insane new floss storage organization method. I'm gonna save that to last because there may be some of you who are just like, Jan, I just can't even. <laughs> And it's also kind of bulky and big, so I'm just going to keep it to the side for the end. Went in here because it's kind of on the bed behind me. All right, so for the most part, while my in-laws were here, I did work on the mushrooms. Um, I wanted something small and compact and um, without a lot of stuff to it. So I got the, all the cross stitch done and have gotten a chunk of the back stitch done. Is that amazing? So down at the bottom you can see both the double, like it's two strand back stitch and one strand back stitch. So that big mushroom and the one next to it are, are both. And then I decided I was going to just concentrate on getting the two stranded back stitch done and then go in and fill in the one stranded. So I just have this section in here to finish with the two strands, which I'm sure I'll get done tonight and hopefully get started on the single strand and get that done the next night. So yeah, this is, this is pretty much 
for the rest of this week, this is pretty much what I'll be working on. I love it. Look at those mushrooms. I cannot wait to start doing this on the lighter fabric that I picked for the second one and just see how it changes. But this is, I love it. Hope my son does too. So there's the one. Now I also started, maybe I worked on this some when my in-laws are here too. I don't remember. I also took this with me to our little stitch and get together on Sunday. My Find Your Joy piece. It has cat fur on it that is waving in my face. Oh, so yeah, this is done on, um, this is a 28 count, um, it's just a 28 count linen. I think I thought it was an even weave, but it's not. I don't have anything more than 28 count on it. It is a linen. This is a 36 count dusk by Picture This Plus. I got this fabric from um, Shakespeare's Peddler, Kitten Stitcher. And I am using Mrs. Sadis's silk. Now she has, um, I think her Etsy shop may still be open for now, but she has created her own website and I will be linking that below as well. Um, I think because Etsy is getting kind of crazy with their policies and their shipping and fees. But anyway, so the colors you see, especially for this, this purple flower, aren't exactly what's called for. It is charted in DMC on the product page in my store. I do have the Mrs. Sadis conversion. I was going to try and get it done into in the software, but it's a little more complicated than I can handle right now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, she has since I started this, she has come up with a dark purple that's more, um, this is five, 550, I think, is what's called for here. She has come up with a dark purple that's more in line with what's called for. So what I'm using is a lot lighter than what the pattern shows. Let me show you the pattern. What an idea. How about I do that? You're gonna get a little sneak peek at my shop. There it is. It's getting there. I'm gonna go in here. So that's the, and you can see that middle flower behind the O in your um, is a darker purple than what I'm using. So I do have, like I said, the, the colors listed in the shop. Um, so if you wanted to use Mrs. Seda silk instead of the DMC, you could see what colors I used. Um, so after the, the Thursday and Friday I had that were so frustrating, I decided I needed to um, just do whatever I wanted to work on this weekend. So I did pull out my bookmark again. I got another fractal done and started, or fractal, another diagonal done and started the next one up here. And yes, I am still just as much in love. Every row that I'm doing, like I do the diagonal stitching is 10 across here, right? Each row we do 10 and then work 10, 10, 10, 10, the whole way down. That's what diagonal stitching is. If I get two stitches in a row that are the same, I celebrate. There is so much confetti just throughout this piece. So it is slow going, but holy cow, is it worth it. I adore this. 28 count over one, one over one, all DMC threads. It's, it's my happy place. So that's what I've been working on. Most of the rest of the week I will be working on the mushrooms, like I said. If I get my floss storage, my big ass project storage, finalized, 
I'm going to start one of mine. I actually started it before my in-laws came, um, reworked the pattern a bit, which I'll talk about when I do the shop video. Um, so yeah, that's all kind of on hold until I get this whole floss stuff figured out. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But first, stuff. Piles of stuff. Some mine, some gifts, some subscriptions. It's been a fun couple of weeks. First and foremost, let me go here. My needle binders. Yay! So this is just a pencil case. The yarn store, a good yarn that I worked at in Sarasota, carried pencils in these pencil cases. Got a couple packs of them. And it's perfect for holding my needle minders. So there's the National Park ones. Again, Anne, thank you so much for this awesome idea. These two were buttons that I got at a good yarn. She has the most amazing buttons at that store. If any of you are ever in Sarasota and you want to see some cool buttons to make needle minders, go to a good yarn. She has some amazing buttons. The only downside of these, so they are fabric. The only downside is that they're a little thick and these are the smaller magnets. So the magnetic strength, even though these are the neodymium, dimium, however you say that, say that, even though these are those strong magnets, by the time it makes it through that thickness, I mean, it works. It's not like, you know, you don't have any magnetic strength on the front at all. It's just not as strong as it would be if there wasn't that space in between. This little butterfly was a pin of my mother's. I just took the, the pin off and stuck the magnet on. I am using the E6000. This is one I got at StitchCon. These are ones that Dee gave me. So yeah, I am getting quite the needle magnet collection. How fun is that for my big projects when I start? I have the Lowry stand, I have needle magnets. I'm like becoming a real stitcher. I got a bunch of, um, these are um, John James Petite Needles from Dying to Cross Stitch. She had them for um, $25 for $7. Petites aren't my favorite, but you get used to them. So I got a hundred, because um, I'm going to need a lot of needles. Wait till you see. Michelle, Maine Moose Mom Stitcher, and Michelle, I finally remembered it. <laughs> She saw this and she thought of me. Now I used to have a needle gauge ruler thingy. It was like that plastic orange one. Do you remember those from years and years and years ago? I'm sure I got it in the 80s. I, who knows where that is? I'm sure it went out in the garbage. I've never seen one like this. So as you can see, I haven't opened it yet. You look at the fabric through the gap, right? And count. And you can like align and see which one is which stitches. So you have 11 through through 25 count on one side, and on the back side you have 26 through 40 count. Oh my God, Michelle, this will help me so much with all this fabric in here that I don't have any idea what it is or what the count is. Thank you, that is brilliant, just brilliant. Carolyn, my girl Carolyn, she's always taking care of me. First of all, it's a surfing card. Look at that. Look at that. I looked at this and I said, cross stitch design. I'm telling you, my head, my head is exploding. So, we'll see. I'm inspired. Carolyn sent me another piece, sample piece from um, Heaven and Earth Designs for the, you know, to, to decide which, which size count we want for the Farewell to Anger piece. So this is 32, easy grid, easy count, whatever it's called. Um, I doubt if I will use 32 count. 
That's awfully small. But look how cute those little squares are. Look how cute. But I'm going to try it and see. See what I think of it. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll go crazy. I could always get a magnifying glass. Christina was using the Mighty Bright, the little light and um, magnifier together at our stitching get together on Sunday. And she really likes that. And I know a lot of you use that. So who knows? And since I have now a stand and I will be using, you know, a frame of some sort, I have something now to clamp that onto. So we shall see. Speaking of my stitchy friends here on the island, not only are they wonderfully friendly, sweet, loving people, they are also very generous people. Serena. Serena is starting a business. She's, a, she's an amazing seamstress. She um, does quilts. She does clothing, um, bags. She, she's an amazing seamstress. So she is going to start a business. She keeps saying matchy matchy. Bag, project bag, grime guard, scissor fob. Forget what else is going to be included. And she's going to be starting a Floss 2 video. Watch this space. But anyways, her business name is called Kaiki Comfort. So Kaiki is the word for children in Hawaiian. In Hawaiian and these are her grandchildren. And she brought us all scissor fobs. Now, of course, I picked this color. Look at the owl. Look how pretty he is. Now, my hair was supposed to be more like this or this. <laughs> oh, well. Look how pretty that is. So that was from Serena. D brought us all from XG Designs. Peacock Elegance. It was a very turquoise kind of day. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous floss. Look at that. I took everybody some of the peacock silk from um, Mrs. Sadas. So, like I said, it was a very turquoise kind of day. And Erin brought us all charts. She had a selection of, now they happen to be Halloween, but at least this one has a cat on it. And I like the, the witch's dress. Actually, I really like this one all together. And I think this might be my first Barbara Anna design. But she included in this some counting pins and another needle minder. I have another needle minder. Yay! That will go in my little tin. I'm, I'm quickly going to grow out of my little tin, I think. You know, I'm pretty sure I still have some other pendants and other, like, hanging jewelry things of my mother's around here someplace. I just have to dig it out. And I'm telling you, my brain exploding. You know, when I was doing jewelry, I got a lot of like bigger stones type of things. Um, I'm gonna see if those will work for needle minders. And if they do, I think I have multiples of some of them. I may be selling some on my website. We'll see. All right, I also placed an order with an Etsy store called homespun sampler. I was finally, on one of my down days, actually, there was one morning, I don't remember which day it was, might have been Friday, that I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning and couldn't get back to sleep. So I spent all that extra time in the morning finally getting into the XStitch app all of the charts that I had gotten from like StitchCon and on. None of that had made it into my app and they were just like piling up on my desk. So as, as, as I was going through that, I realized that I only needed two more charts for the Prairie Schooler alphabet. So I only needed STU and JKL. So I went out and it was very hard to find. One, two, three, Stitch no longer carries these. So I decided I better go ahead and get them before they disappear totally. So this this um, Etsy store, Homespun Sampler, had them. So Prairie Schooler, STU, and JKL. This is the cardstock version. This is the reprint. So now I have the entire set of the alphabet to do 
someday. <laughs> and while I was there, I saw this one. Spring at Hawk Run Hollow. This is not one that I see very often. Everybody does the, the autumn one and the, you know, there, there's all the different Hawk Run Hollow ones and they're all just absolutely gorgeous. I'd like to do the Christmas one at some point. I love that one. But you don't see the spring one very often. So I decided to go ahead and get that. I may or may not do all of the squares. I definitely won't do it in this configuration. I'd like to kind of end up with nine squares and do it as a square. But this says, let's see if I can read it without my glasses. Behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Well, that's not true for spring, really. Spring is when the rain comes. Just saying. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our, in our lands. That's this one with the birds on it. Sheep. Sheep. Let's see, the fig tree puts forth the figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. I don't know what that's based on, if that's her own, um, her own verse that she made up, or if it's somebody else's. I haven't opened this to look at it. I, if I do this, like, I like the square, but I wouldn't necessarily do I don't know. I don't know. That's a long way away, but I have it. So again, Homespun Sampler on Etsy. And then I got um, the Christmas ornament issue this year. I got this from 123 Stitch. I decided I'm gonna get the ornament issues every year from here on out. I'm not real thrilled with a lot of these. I'm not real thrilled with most of these. Some of them are cute, but most of them are just like, it's like the best ones are on the front. <laughs> I will do a flip through of this in the not too distant future so you can see it. Last but not least, um, the Lola cuff that I loved or the, the Kairos cuff from Laura Nelkin. I signed up for three months of her Lola club, which is the smaller accessories club. And I got the next one. It is a hat. So this is how the kit comes. I don't need a hat, at least at this point. Maybe someday I will. But this kit uses Katana from Barocco. This is a, where is it? 94% Merino, 6% Nylon in that pretty green. That is a really pretty heathered green. And then a skein of Letty Lopey for the color work and that's 100% wool. The goodies included are a green lollipop and this little tag, my tag actually got kind of wrinkled. I haven't taken it out, obviously. It is, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's that little tag to sew onto your hat if you so desire. So, some fun color work some really fun colors and a lollipop <laughs> who knows when I'll do it I mean like I said I don't know I don't need hats right now especially wool hats so those are the goodies from the past two weeks now are you ready we're gonna move into the insanity so I need a drink first. Again, for those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I had my, and if you saw my organization video from way back when we were still in Maryland, you'll know I had my um, main floss inventory in a hanging file folder drawer hanging on those little lanyard clips, you know, the bags, kind of along the lines of the Annie's Keepers. I really liked the look of Annie's Keepers, but I was not going to spend that kind of money on it. I found over time that it was a pain in the butt. Annie's Keepers is probably much better 
the little lanyard clips move around a lot and would get hooked on each other. So that was a pain sometimes to get the bags off or on because the, the hooks were, were tangled. But one of the biggest pet peeves I had was, you know, number one, I'm kneeling down on the ground. And of course, with my back being what it is, that's just not a good position for me right now. But it seemed like nine times out of 10, the floss color that I needed was the one way back in the back of the drawer. I mean, all these different colors of floss and I always had to get into the back. So annoying. So Mike and I are sitting there talking and you know, he's, he's such a good guy. He really is listening to me ramble on about, talk about silly little problems, right? But he also is a very inventive guy. His brain, I always tell him whenever I have a conundrum, I always say, honey, I need your brain. Um, and he really kind of like, you poor thing, you need my brain. Um, but he thinks out of the box and that's what I love. Now, a lot of you, gave me some fantastic suggestions, told me how you do it, gave me some ideas. The thing is, any floss, and this is the conversation that Mike and I are having, any floss organization that I am thinking about, one of the major aspects is, how is it going to work in the RV? In the not, very not too distant future, we will be out full-timing it. So it has to be compact, it has to be easy to get to. And so I'm thinking about, you know, compact and easy and not bobbins. I told Mike about the bobbin idea and he's like, why would you spend all that time? So I agree with him. I am not a bobbin person. Sorry for all of you that are. I know it works for you. It's not something I'm gonna do. You're gonna laugh when you see what we have done though. I don't know yet if it's going to work. I just finished putting it together the day before yesterday and it's not like I've had to access anything off of it. But what I've basically done is taken all of my floss from all of my projects. You know, I had them on the separate rings sitting in that kind of basket that Maria made me, the crocheted basket. Um, it was floppy and it they kept falling over you know there was no structure to it um and i had so many bags on the rings it was hard to i mean it was that wasn't hard to get to necessarily but it was just kind of annoying and having that big basket sitting next to me it was just annoying <laughs> you're gonna laugh so what am i showing you this is foam core. Pack of three for like, I don't know, $13 on the island. I don't know what it is on the mainland, on the island. Velcro, strips of Velcro spaced down a tab that tells me what numbers are on them. When I need a bag, I can just pull it off, put it back on. The stack of them, so that they're, they are in numeric order. The stack of them is about, so this is like one piece, one big piece of foam board cut in half, and I can get 60 on each one of these. The stack of them, I have eight, is about, oh, maybe about that thick. So I'm going to put them in like an under the bed box and store them under the bed in the RV. When I need to travel someplace, I can just take off the ones I need and put them on one of those rings. So, this is now my main floss storage. We'll see. I think it's pretty interesting. They're, it's, I mean, they're not going anywhere. The Velcro crook can handle it. I can see them all easily. I can put them on and off easily. Now down here, you know, I just have to flip up and reach for it and take it off. And then put it, whoops, if I don't drop it. Back 
goes. So, we'll see. So that's my main floss storage. In a box, under the bed, and it'll go under the bed here too. Sasha probably won't be too happy about that because he's under the bed, or maybe he will, because it'll give him something else to lean against. Who knows? My big ass project storage. All right, I don't remember if I showed you, I think I talked about pockets in my last video. I don't remember what I showed you. But what I got from Amazon was a packet of, they're like coin or stamp pockets, right? And the one I got had different sizes. So this one has like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So this one has 30 pockets on a page. There was a bunch that had 30. This one has one, two, three, four, one. This one has 20. 20 pockets on a page. That's the 20. And then there was a couple that have 12 pockets on a page. So the one that has 30 pockets on a page was just too small. It's hard. Now each one of these pockets has little flaps on it, right? But it's just really hard to get in and out and trying to get floss in and out was just a pain in the butt. So the little ones didn't work. The medium ones are somewhat okay. They're not too bad. Now, the next step was the floss organization. These work really, really well having the needle just stuck. There's a little where the flap is, whether you can see. The flap ends and it curves down, and where it curves down, come back here, needle. Er, there's a little bit of a space and my needle just goes right in there. But I needed to have a way so I didn't have all those strands hanging down. That was getting a little annoying for me. Now, the felt that I had was not sticky back, so I used um, some Eileen's Tacky Glue and it's not, it's not really sticking. So then I used some Velcro pieces, and the rest of these are Velcro, and this is the hook side of the Velcro. The other side of the Velcro, the loop, um, was too soft. I don't know, the, the floss wouldn't stick to it. I am using the harder stuff, and it's, of course, is a little bit too rough on the floss. Like it really kind of, it kind of grips too hard so that the floss is getting a little bit, a little bit pulled at, so that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. So yesterday I went to Ben Franklin and got some sticky backed felt. And like I said, this size of pocket is okay, it's not ideal. It's still kind of hard to get the floss in and out of. And it's not like I'll be able to like just pull one strand, I'll have to take the floss out and put it back in. So that's something. The other issue is getting the, the symbol and the um, floss number on here. I was defeated by technology on this one. Our printer stopped working. Now my patterns do have, let me see if I can find it quickly. My patterns do have a floss sorter. So that means you can print out, this is the one for Find Your Joy you can print that out, right? It has the symbol, has the number. So my plan was to print out that page, put that on some double stick tape and cut it out and then stick it onto here. And the double stick tape I got is repositionable. So whenever I'm done with this project, this is actually for the Santa Fe decor one of mine. 
Um, so when I'm done with that project, you know, 15 years from now, <laughs> I could take the symbol off and reuse the pockets. I know, I know. Anyway, that's the idea. But the printer died. We went out this weekend and got a new printer. Mike has not set it up yet. So that's why I'm kind of in between. Everything's paused. The best solution, the best size was the big ones. Easy to get in and out of. I can still slide the needles down in the side. This is the sticky backed felt. So I can wind up the, the thread from the needle and stick it in there. And it's big enough that I can fit two colors. No, the colors don't match. This was just an experiment. Um, it's big enough that I can fit both colors in there. So I ordered another set of just these that should be here tomorrow. So I hope to get Santa Fe Decor. That now has 191 colors in it. The big one, the big version. I hope to get that ready to get started here in the next week. So, that's that. Insane? Insane. That's okay. I am perfectly okay with being insane. I have no problem with that at all. And I think that's it. A lot of catching up to do, right? So let's see. I hope before Friday that I will be doing a welcome to my store video. Friday I will be doing a stitch with me. I need, I still haven't done the magazines flip throughs. I know, I, I know you guys are okay with that. No pressure. Um, so yeah, all kinds of stuff happening. I am okay. Again, I appreciate so much you guys reaching out to me, making sure all was good. Um, you guys are the best. I love you guys. I hope you know that. I hope you are treating yourself okay. I hope you realize when you have a panic attack that it's time to step back. If you can, believe me, I know all of our brains work differently. But if it's possible, step back and try and pinpoint what's causing you that panic and try and reason out whether you really need to be panicking about that thing. That's what works for me. Stepping back and just quiet, sit down, think, what are you panicking about? You're panicking about putting a video out? It's okay, you don't need to do a video. You're panic about, panicking about your floss being a mess? Really, Jan? Get over it. It will get worked out. When it gets worked out, nobody is dying from this. So yeah, if you can step back and think about it, hopefully it'll help. It helps me. And I'm, I'm, I know that I'm lucky that I'm able to do that. Like I said, I don't get panic attacks often. I do get anger issues often. You should have seen me on, oh, Saturday. The website was pissing me off big time. And you know, I think the main issue with that is when I get to the point where there's things that I don't know and I can't do anything about and Mike can't help me at any given time and I, you know, there is some pressure here to get that ready, get that done and get that open. Just, uh, it's all good. I am good. You are good. I love you guys. Have a fantastic week and I will see you soon.